Hey guys, it's your tag girl Mary and welcome back to my channel. I know, confused kayo for the thumbnail. I have to re-upload this video kasi I have some explaining to do. I have three things kasi guys na I want to correct on my previous video ng Vivo V17 Pro. And ayoko namang i-mislead kayo kaya kailangan kong i-re-upload yung video syempre para rin to sa inyo. Una sa lahat, cameras. Pangalawa, flash. And third, the colors. So, yung review na mapapanood nyo after this clip, bago na sila guys, and tama na. Enjoy! Hey guys, it's your tag girl Mary, and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while guys since nakapag-unbox and review tayo. And I'm very excited to be back kasi very excited rin ako sa device na to. Sobrang interesting niya, and to be specific yung cameras niya. Yes, you guys are right. For today's video, we will be unboxing at ibibigay ko yung aking full Review. Yes, full review guys kasi sampung araw ko na pang ginagamit itong Vivo V17 Pro. Lagi naman ako may Android device na kasama sa akin every time na aalas ako. And ang dami kong gustong sabihan guys, ang dami kong gustong ikwento about sa smartphone na to. So ayun guys, expect nyo yung mga sasabihin ko e eh, galing talaga sa experience ko sa kanya. Imagine ninyo guys, it has 6 cameras. Hindi po lima sa likod, kundi apat sa rear panel at dalawa sa front camera. Pero syempre, apart sa cameras, ano pa nga ba yung kayang ipagmalaki sa atin ng Vivo V17 Pro? Okay ba yung kanyang performance? Okay rin ba yung kanyang battery life? And can the Vivo V17 Pro compete to other devices na halos na sa price segment niya like their Redmi K20 Pro or, or even the Huawei Nova 5T na mas mababa yung presyo sa kanya? At the end of this video guys, pag-uusapan natin yung pros and cons niya. So wag kayong maglala. Without further ado, excited na ako. I-unbox na natin ang Vivo V17 Pro. As you can see sa box niya guys, it's very premium looking. Ang ganda talaga niya guys and kung i-compare natin siya doon sa previous box ng Vivo V15 Pro, makikita niyo talaga na nag-iba yung itsura niya and it, overall guys, ang ganda mo siyang mamahalin, yes. And yung kanyang design sa gilid, actually medyo may pagka-holographic siya na kapag natatapatan ng ilaw. Meron tayong 8GB of RAM with 128GB of internal storage. So pansin ko guys, itong half ng 2019, padamihan talaga ng cameras. Yun ang labanan ngayon. Upon opening the box, bubungad sa atin agad guys yung Vivo V17 Pro na smaller box. And tingnan nyo naman, it's very premium looking na naman. Meron na naman siyang holographic design dito. So buksan natin siya. So ayun guys, we have here a free case from Vivo. It really looks good and kung mapapansin nyo guys, tumeter na siya doon sa kulay na device na meron ako. Ayun, it's made of plastic. Baka isipin nyo lang leather kasi hindi siya masyadong halata sa camera. But anyway, ang ganda ng case na kasama sa kanya. And we also have here of course Vivo Quick Start Guide na hindi naman natin binabasa. <laughs> and we have here a warranty card. And... And dito yung ating panundot guys. Ayan, nawala ko yung kanyang pinakalalagyan. And ito yung itsura niya guys. USB-C cord. And let us set aside first the phone. Tingnan muna natin. We have here a pair of earphones from Vivo. At isa lang ibig sabihin yan guys. 3.5mm headphone jack to. So meaning may headphone jack yung Vivo V17 Pro natin. Huwag kayong mag-alala guys. Hindi inalis ng Vivo yan. And lastly, we have here the Vivo Power Brick. My most favorite part. Tanggalin na natin yung plastic, guys. Tada! The color that I have, guys, is night black or just simply black. And then yung isa naman nilang color, guys, is what they call crystal white. I wish I have that, pero natuwa rin ako na ito yung meron ako, the midnight ocean, or just simply black. Para naman din alam nyo kung anong itsura nung black. Actually, it's not just plain black kasi every time na Hindi siya solid black, not compared to other smartphones. So, kapag tatapatan natin siya ng ilaw, meron din siyang glare effect. Ayan, kung mapapansin nyo. What we have, guys, is a glossy finish. So, expect nyo na na medyo may pagka-smudge magnet siya. And knowing nyo ako, Ate Mary, mapasmado ang kamay ko like all the time. So, it's really necessary na ilagay ko yung case niya. And also, at the back of the phone, slightly curved din yung kanyang sides. So, mas may grip tayo every time na hahawakan natin si Vivo V17 Pro. Mas makapit siya sa kamay. Ganun po kasi kapag curved yung edges. And then, for a closer look, mapapansin nyo nandun nakalagay yung ating quad camera setup sa pinakagitna niya. And then, sa bandang taas. Design-wise, wala akong naging problema na nasa gitna siya. 
Okay lang sa akin kasi mostly lahat ng smartphones nasa upper left yung kanilang quad camera. And also, if you're looking for the LED flash, nandun po siya sa gitna. And then, on the lower part of the device, meron tayong SIM card tray dito, microphone, USB-C port, and nandito yung ating speaker grill. And then, on the right part of the phone, nandito po yung ating volume rocker and the power and lock button. And then, on the left side, meron tayong dedicated Google Assistant button dito. And mapapansin nyo guys, or I mean, hindi nyo mapapansin, pero kung mararamdaman nyo, mas may texture, texture siya compared sa power button. I think that is because para mas mabilis nating ma-recognize which is which. Para hindi tayo malito. And I think hindi to mapable or customable para maiba. Ang I think pwede lang siyang baguhin, pwede rin siyang maging Vivo's Jovi Assistant. Ito na guys, on top of the phone, it is the world's first dual pop-up selfie camera. And kung mapapansin nyo guys, sa gitna ng dalawang selfie cameras, may flash din sa gitna. And trivia lang guys, ang tawag ng Vivo doon is Selfie Soft Light. Basically, um, pwede natin siya gamitin para magkaroon ng soft diffused light na ginagamit ng mostly mga professional photographers para mas even yung facial features na meron tayo. Anyway, baka hinahanap nyo rin guys yung ating um, headphone jack and yung secondary microphone. Lahat po yung nasa taas. Headphone jack nasa upper right and yung secondary microphone nasa may bandang left naman. Bago tayo magtungo sa kanyang display guys, meron na akong gustong i-share sa inyo. Meron tayong two ways to unlock the device. Actually, isa nga lang and yun yung meron siyang fingerprint scanner. 10 days of using it, wala akong naging problema, guys. Solid, napakabilis at napaka-accurate ng fingerprint scanner niya. Alam niyo naman, sobrang na-spoil ako sa fingerprint scanner na meron ang OnePlus 7 Pro and the OnePlus 7T Pro. So, teaser sa next video, may OnePlus 7T Pro tayo. Anyway, na-spoil talaga ako doon and the Vivo V17 Pro, hindi niya ako binigo. Nakikipagsabayan talaga siya sa bilis and sa accuracy. Eh, pero guys, alam ko, baka nagtataka kayo, huwag kayo mag-alala kapag hindi gumana yung fingerprint scanner niya or yung in-display fingerprint scanner niya nga, meron tayong tinatawag na assistive facial recognition. Ano na ibig sabihin nun, guys, kapag 3 consecutive times nating trinay at hindi talaga gumana yung fingerprint natin, gagana na yung facial recognition niya na kung... That is if sinetup nyo yon sa settings. Baka kasi hindi nyo nilagay kasi iisipin nyo wala. So, ayun guys, gagana lang yun kapag hindi nga gumana yung fingerprint nyo. And honestly guys, sa 10 days na ginamit ko siya, ni hindi ko nga siya nagamit unless sasadyain natin. So, sasadyain natin ngayon para mapakita ko sa inyo na talagang nag-work siya. And just like the Vivo V15 Pro, meron siyang free fall detection. So, kapag nalaglag siya, tapos nakabukas yung ating motorized pop-up camera, huwag kayo mag-alala guys, kusang babalik yan sa loob. Next natin pag-uusapan guys yung kanyang display. Interesting part din to ng Vivo kasi isa siya sa pinaka-favorite feature ko besides yung kanyang cameras. Sobrang na-impress talaga ako sa kanyang display. The Vivo V17 Pro guys, meron siyang 6.44 inches. Super AMOLED display guys with 2400 by 1080 pixels resolution. We have lots of screen guys. We have lots of pixels. And yung kanyang bezels guys, hindi siya bezel-less katulad ng Vivo Next 3 of course. But yung side bezels niya and yung sa taas, it's barely even there. And then yung kanyang chin naman guys, medyo may kakapalan siya compared sa side bezels. But still, hindi ko na rin siya masyadong napapansin. So ayun guys, super na-appreciate ko yung super AMOLED display niya. We have deep plaques and sobrang vivid ng kulay niya. And plus points then guys kasi meron siyang always on display feature kaso Take note lang dyan kasi baka medyo maapektohan yung battery natin kapag naka-always on display. Now, let's talk about yung pinaka-highlight ng smartphone na to, guys. Yung kanyang cameras. For the cameras, we have 48 megapixels, Sony IMX582, 8 megapixels ultra-wide, 2 megapixels depth sensor, and 2 megapixels macro lens. Now, for the front-facing cameras, ang daming S kasi ang dami ng camera niya. Dalawa. We have 32 megapixels for the primary camera, 8 megapixels super wide angle lens. Unahin natin pag-usapan yung front facing cameras niya. Honestly guys, sobrang sharp ng mga selfies na pinoduce ng Vivo V17 Pro sa atin. Wala akong shutter lag na na-experience. And even in low light guys, okay na okay rin yung quality ng front facing niya. Bakit? Dahil meron tayong bagong tinatawag na ultra low light mode. For the 8 megapixels ultra wide 
camera ng um, Vivo V17 Pro. Meron siyang 105 degrees field of view. Imagine that guys, ilang tao yung kakasya kapag kailangan natin mag-selfie. It makes it more easier, lalo na kapag mag-isa ka lang and you want everything na makita lahat sa background mo or yung mga tao na kasama mo. It will make your selfie experience on another level. But take note lang guys, may pagka fish eye effect yung kanyang super wide angle lens sa front facing. So medyo mataas ang distortion levels even on the sides. So kung hindi niyo kung hindi kayo marunong gumamit or hindi kayo alam niyo na hindi tama yung angle niyo, baka ma-disappoint kayo on some parts. Unang-una yung kanyang main sensor na 48 megapixel Sony IMX582. It's not really a huge surprise for me guys kasi Sony IMX582 ginagamit na talaga siya dati sa ibang smartphones. Pero yung na-surprise talaga ako is yung naging result ng photos natin using that main sensor. It came out to be very detailed and sharp guys and yung saturation level saktong-sakto lang. Although may mga shots ako guys na very um, umaangat talaga yung color red. So ayun guys medyo mas heavier nga siya on that color at medyo mas nagiging warm siya. And then for the super wide angle lens ng rear cameras niya, it is capable of shooting up to 120 degrees field of view. And not compared to the front facing na manage niya yung distortion level niya. Without even sacrificing yung overall quality ng photos. And guys, very consistent na yung kulay na meron tayo using the normal mode and the wide angle lens. Next that we will be talking about is yung kanyang performance. Ito medyo juicy and interesting to. Kasi for the chipset guys, ito, sige sabihin ko na agad, it has the Snapdragon 675 AIE with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. Alam ko medyo familiar sa inyo yung kanyang chipset. Bakit? Kasi it is the same processor na meron tayo with the Vivo V15 Pro. And ayun guys, medyo disappointing lang siya on that part kasi even the Vivo V15 Pro, we can get the max variant na 8GB of RAM. But ito guys, syempre sasabihin ko sa inyo yung experience ko sa kanya during my 10 days of using this as my daily driver. Syempre, kailangan yung experience ko talaga yung sabihin ko at hindi talaga sa, sa specs lang tayo magbe-base. On paper, hindi nagbago yung ating specs from its predecessor na Vivo V15 Pro. But with my experience, yung smartphone na to guys, it was able to handle my day-to-day -day task, social media, YouTube, Netflix, so kahit na anong iba to ko sa kanya na ganong mga apps na kaya niyang i-handle yun. Wala akong na-notice na lags, guys. But for the gaming performance, dito tayo medyo magkakaproblema. Siyempre, ibang usapan na to. This device, guys, it was able to handle very basic games like yung Subway Surfer, Candy Crush, di ba? Very pang tita yung mga games natin. And also, the Mobile Legends, kinaya ni Vivo V17 Pro. Alam ko marami tayong naglalaro dyan ng Mobile Legends na kaya na itong device na to. Hindi naman kasi siya masyadong nagre-require ng mataas na processor, kayang-kaya niya even, the, even your Redmi Note 7, kayang-kaya nun guys sa Mobile Legends. So, what more the Vivo V17 Pro? Pero kung pag-uusapan natin yung mga high graphics intensive games like yung for example Asphalt 9 and PUBG, doon ako nagka-problema ng konti. But at least may added feature yung Vivo V17 Pro natin guys. Meron tayong tinatawag na Game Boost. Ito turn on lang natin yon para mas ma-enhance yung gaming performance ng Vivo V17 Pro. So, ayun guys, kung in-upgrade ng konti, siguro ng Vivo yung kanyang chipset na kahit gawin man lang Snapdragon 7 12, mas naging okay sana. Setting that aside, guys, pag-usapan naman natin yung kanyang software. It has Fantouch OS 9 based on Android 9 Pie. That software, it's not the most friendly custom UI na meron tayo. However, I really appreciate Vivo kasi ever since malaki talaga yung pinagbago nila, every updates na ilalabas nila. Habang tumatagal, mas nagiging user-friendly na yung UI nila. Just like for example, kailangan natin buksan quick settings, e, so swipe up lang natin yan. And this overall setup guys, it kind of reminds me of iOS devices. So ayun, habang tumatagal guys, every update, mas nagiging user-friendly na yung UI ng Vivo. Now for the battery capacity, we have 4,100 mAh battery capacity with 18 watt fast charging. Battery capacity ng Vivo V17 Pro guys, it did improve kasi yung predecessor niya guys, ang base na naalala ko, 3,700 mAh battery capacity lang yung meron yun. And 
for me, it's a big jump. Kung pag-uusapan natin yung real life experience ko sa battery niya, whole day guys, hindi ako nag-charge using this device. From meetings, kapag nagbibirol ako sa labas, kapag naka-turn on yung cellular data natin, at may natitira pa ako minsan na around 20% to 25% bago ko siya i-charge sa gabi. When it comes naman sa charging, guys, it only takes me one and a half hours to um, basically two hours kapag ginagamit ko pa siya. Kaso, guys, yung 18-watt fast battery charging niya, it's still the same from the Vivo V15 Pro na meron tayo from its predecessor. So, ayan, guys, you have reached the end of this video. Pag-usapan na natin yung kanyang pros and cons or in short, yung final verdict ko with the Vivo V17 Pro. Top features guys para sa akin is of course the cameras. Hindi naman natin mapagkakaila na sobrang cool na meron tayong dual camera tapos nasa motorized pop-up pa siya. And not just that, meron pa tayong quad camera setup sa rear panel niya. In short guys, we have a very versatile set of cameras na pwede natin gamitin for our day-to-day -day usage. Pangalawa guys, yung design. I really appreciate kung saan yung placement ng cameras niya, yung headphone jack na nasa taas, tapos meron tayong USB-C port. Siguro guys, ang hindi ko lang talaga nagustuhan is yung kanyang cheap set. Kung ginawa na lang Snapdragon 712, mas naging okay sana. Pero syempre, lahat naman ng smartphones may mga compromises yan. So camera-wise, or let's just say na part sa pagbili ng decision making nyo ng smartphones yung cameras, magugustuhan nyo talaga ang Vivo V17 Pro. That's it for today's video guys. Sana nagustuhan nyo yung ating unboxing and review ng Vivo V17 Pro. Sana talaga. And of course, don't forget sa ating ongoing giveaways na ilalagay ko po yung link sa baba. Bye guys! It's your Tegra Mary and see you on my next video.